Hello, thank you for joining me. That is the Norwegian Parliament building. I'm in the centre of Oslo. The building right down there, that is the Royal Palace. That looks like quite a nice walk, but that's not what I'm going to do today. What I'm going to do in today's video, we're going to go from the lowest metro station on the Oslo metro to the highest metro station. So we're just here in this rather pleasant square in the centre of Oslo, and you can see there's that, there's a T sign, the camera's not picking it out. And that is the like the equivalent of the London Underground Roundel, and that's for the metro. So we're going to go into the, the metro. Now the station is called, I'll show it to you, the name of here. It's called Sortiget, so you can see that T. I say that's the symbol of the Oslo metro. I've been told that translates to literally as the thing. So this is the lowest station. So we've got to go down into the metro, and then we're going to take the train all the way up to the highest metro, Oslo Metro, as I did mention in yesterday's video, most of it is above ground, only a few sections of it are underground. This is one of the underground sections, so we come to here, the escalators. When we went on it yesterday, we didn't even go on any escalators. We, we did, to put it in London context, yesterday's video, we probably went from, say, the equivalent of Aldgate East to Bow Road. Um, and today we're going down into quite a deep station I'm going to take a guess, it's not that long, but I think this could be the longest escalator on the Oslo Metro, but I may not be sure. So now we're, we're deep under the ground. This station has this sort of feature of all these, this, um, not quite sure how to describe it, but it seems to be the feature of the station. It's got a very 1970s feel. Now this is where in London there'd be a gate line. This is the equivalent of a gate line. They, you can just walk straight on. I do have a ticket, I've basically paid for 24 hours worth of traveling probably when I finish this video I'll go and top it up so you can top it up in like little corner shops like you can with London Oyster card but you can also it's cheaper though if you top it up at the main railway station so we're sort of in this corridor now and um, there's more escalators there so they must take you up to another part of the city now I want the westbound because it's like a giant circle so another similarity with London it's like the equivalent of London circle line so I need to get on route one. So I'm here. That's sort of gets. So these are various routes I could do. I need to do. No, that, that's the other way. That's eastbound. I need to do route one, and that's the station I'm going to. That one there. And look at this. This corridor. It's just like I don't know. It doesn't feel like a metro station. It feels like some sort of strange. Um, I don't know. Place. A bit almost sci-fi-ish. Like a. 70s spaceship. Anyway, we are coming down now onto the platform. So, just got to wait and see if there's a train on line one. Do you, oh, look, there is a train pulling in on the other side. 3158, one of the seamless trains. And from looking on the DMI, the dot matrix indicator, I can see there is a train due on Route 1. If you look, this is two units coupled together. They're three car units. So we've got 335 and 33106. It tells you the one coming in now is going to be a six car. If you look on the DMI, it shows, oh, it's, yeah, so it's two trades. The one we're going to support one. So 33115 and there's 33017. But the train I'm going to travel on will be just one of these units. So I'm going to wait two minutes. This one will go, my one will arrive. We're just stopping at this really unusual station. We're on the branch going off, so that's like the circle line down there. That's the platform going the other way. I notice there's a, a footbridge here, and there's actually a foot crossing. So people, as you can see, have to cross the tracks, and then they cross that bridge. That's really unique. On you would never get that on underground. Also, as you can see, there's plenty of snow now. Now we've come further up, so that's the the circle metro line. It's really nice house there. Look at that. 
the other thing that I find quite amusing is, as you can see down there, people with skis. Imagine taking skis on the London Underground. Stranger. Stranger. That's the next station. You'd only ever get people taking skis on the London Underground. Say if there's been a lot of snow and maybe people were taking them to Hampstead Heath or something. I just can't imagine people taking skis on the London Underground. You may be able to tell by looking at the wall that we are clearly climbing. I've never ever run steam on here, but if they did, it would be mega. A bit like, um, probably more extreme than when they've done steam up on the bank, I've done steam on the Met. Anyway, I'm going to continue to enjoy the ride. We've just come to another station. They made a few announcements about short platforms. So they said like the last set of doors would not open. I don't know if this station is one of them, but quite a few stations they were saying that. Anyway, I'm going to now sit down and enjoy this really rather spectacular metro journey. Yeah, I'll be quite mm -hmm.
Vær oppmerksom på avstand mellom tog og plattform. Please mind the gap. Dørene er lukket. Well, this has to be one of the most spectacular tube journeys or metro journeys I've ever been on. We're just coming now to Holmacombe station. It's got a short platform, so I've got to walk through the train. So we've really, really climbed up to an altitude. Look, the snow is getting pretty deep. Okay, we're just coming into Holmacombe now. So this isn't the end of the line. So we've got higher to go, but this is where the famous ski jump is. So that's why I thought we'd get out here at Holmacombe first and have a look. So this is yeah, quite exciting. Unlike London, where they have one, a button just for you to see who the tourists are, I think I've got to go up there. I'm nearly not going to get out. Um, yeah, you have to press the button. It shows I don't know what I'm doing here. Whoa, ooh, brutalist architecture. And it's like really misty. So this is Holmacon. So somewhere around here is that famous ski jump that was used in the Winter Olympics. I really like this brutalist architecture. Brutalist architecture that looks out across the metro station. So we're going to watch our metro train disappear. It has actually got quite a long platform, so I'm not sure why they only open the middle doors anyway. And it's, it's still climbing. So this is Holmacon. There goes our train. The, uh, the yellow, what you can see there, that is the third rail pickup and it's underneath. So the train has like a shoe which goes along like that, unlike London where it's on top because for obvious reasons. There's snow. I remember they did talk about changing it in London because they said due to the, I think they had one day when it snowed and the trains didn't run. But you know, this is like this all year. Oh, this, is, this is just so, uh, just so not like a metro station. It's just, yeah. It's this winter, amazing place of just white and grey and hints of green under the trees. You know, what other tube stations can you pick up snow like this? Not throw it, just start throwing snowballs. I can't imagine this. I think probably to give an idea of height that we've come to, think of Wendover used to be on the Metropolitan Line. It's now on the Chilton Line. Well, think of Wendover Woods. So if you ever go on the on the... Chilton Line or the old Metropolitan Line North Hampshire on the Chilton Railway Trade. You get to Wendover Station. If you look out, you'll see Wendover Woods above the hills. We're probably that kind of equivalent of height, I think. So, but that'd be like the railway being up in Wendover Woods. So we're, we're pretty high. Yeah, let's have a look at the station from above. Oh, there's a train coming in. So there we go. There's a train pulling in to Holmacol Metro Station. I'm going to go for a little explore and I'm going to come back and continue to the very end of the line. It's all rather spectacular up here, up on these uh, mountain roads in the snow. I've just noticed that uh, down here, look, there's a, a manhole. And you can see 
There's a good three inches of ice. And they've all this broken ice here, look, is where they've had to break away and they obviously needed to get to that manhole. Anyway, I think we've come to the ski centre. So I'm not really that into skiing, but I could see the ski jump from down in the city centre yesterday. And this is a bit dead around here. But it appears like I'm coming into um, some sort of arena. If I walked around the corner and found a hotel, I think I'd be like being in the shining. Oh, look, there's a, it's not running, but there's a chairlift. Oh, that'd be so exciting to go up on that. If that's not running now, then when does it run? I wonder. I always like going on things like chairlifts. And it's so exciting. And some odd noises coming. And yes, it's clearly, it's so foggy, unfortunately, so I'm not going to see the view of the city. But look, well, oh, that, that's the jump. Yes, that's the jump. I, I, the camera's probably not picking it out, but I can see the jump is there. And there goes the chairlift up there. And then there's this huge arena, and I'm the only person here. I don't know where everyone else is. I thought there'd be like loads of tourists coming through. Look, look at that. It's, there's one other person. There's a couple walking down the steps over there. And there's a huge arena. So I think if I go just around here, We'll be able to have a, a little look at the ski centre. I'll we'll go back to the metro station and go even higher. It just, I can't get my head around this. Because whenever I go to metros, or go, go on metros in various cities around Europe, I'm never that bothered about the metro. I like going on them, but they're nearly always underground. I like to, so if, if I go anywhere, usually the trams are my kind of priority thing to transport to travel on for the sake of traveling on tram bashing but here i feel like i just want a metro bash and just do all the metro lines i probably will do more tram lines i'm just gonna have to come back but look at that that is blooming mega it, even in this fog it's hard to convey just how vast this is it's huge i've yeah i've never seen anything quite like this before i mean i have to say i haven't really been to many of these winter ski resorts in the past. I really should do, because they have some spectacular railways. They certainly do in Switzerland and Austria. And yeah, I'm right now. These are all the seats. And there's, there's one bloke sat there on the bench. There's just not many people about. And that is the jump. It looks like I'm just pointing into nothingness. But it is, yeah, spectacular and amazing. I'm gonna have, just marvel at this now off camera and then walk back to the metro station. There we are, we're back on the train, just departing Holmacolm. So it's about three or four more stations to the top. And the platform is, as I said, the most of the stations on this line on a level. That's the old like station master's house. And that building there, I'm not too sure, possibly. The train's taking quite an extreme curve. It was like all like this, sort of lots of hairpin bends as far as a, a train can go on this line. There weren't any spirals. There hasn't, since we've come out of Oslo city centre, we've not been through any tunnels. So it's just a really, yeah. really spectacular journey. Oh, we just arced. I just saw the other side, there was a big flash where the, um, the third rail arced. There's a platform there. Oh, that's full. There's no one. That's interesting. Why is there two random platforms? If you know, then do comment and tell me. You know, I'm gonna continue enjoying the journey. It's a shame it's got really foggy, because if it wasn't foggy, it would be a spectacular view, but I'm gonna continue Join the journey up to the top. We're just coming in now to the final station on the line. In fact, we're, we're here. And it's it's literally been all forestry for the last few miles. There's been no real uh, settlement at all. A few little villages. If I can get out, Sid, the platform's really short, so it's not open there. It's quite funny, everyone's getting off with skis and snowboards. How's this as we arrive at the highest metro station. Everyone's got skis, snowboards, toboggans. So here we are. This is the highest metro station. Not quite sure how you pronounce it. It's 469 meters above sea level. And the train doesn't quite fit in the platform. Let's go and have a look at the end. It's, it's just, yeah, this is... Durnura, because I understand means doors are closing. So this is just like, yeah, the... Is it going already? Or maybe it goes to a turn back siding. I'm not sure. But here we are, we're at the top 
of the metro. And oh, there's, a, there's a level crossing in front of us. So what, what's going on? Uh, oh, I see. Yeah, I think the train continues a bit further. It's so strange being at a metro station and people disappearing off on toboggans. You're never going to see that in London or probably many other cities. The other thing is, when we were at Hummerkin, where the ski jump was, it was rather foggy. Have a look now. We are above the fog. We've really, yeah, we've come to the extreme of metros. There's a restaurant down there. Lots of walking trails you can do. Let's have a look at the train. And there is the train itself. That is... Uh, I don't know if the driver's going to bring it forward. I'm not sure the driver's going to bring it forward, but um, that's why I'm not crossing. He's looking at me. Um, I think, yeah, the driver's saying it's okay to cross. So we can cross the line at the highest metro station. And there's our train. This is so exciting. This is just, yeah, the. Um, there we go. So he's going to the reversing siding now, I think. So number 3342 is the highest metro train I've ever been on. There he goes into the reversing siding. So you've got this little shelter here, which the seats look rather cold on. I'm going to have a look, see if I can find a cafe. I really want to get a coffee at the, at the highest metro station. I'm not sure actually the highest metro station in the world. But it's the highest difference in the shortest difference you know what I mean because we were down at the lower station and we've come up really high there's more people off going off there with skis it, it's just all um it's just not what we're used to in London so here we are this is from the certain I said the train went off to the reversing siding I feel I'm not quite done yet I want to oh it's coming back I was just gonna say I want to go and see where the actual end of the metro is so let's just see the train come into the station here we are at the highest metro station we can see the train arrive. So that's the same one we were on. I just want to see what's around the corner, really, and um, see what there is at the highest metro station. Like, where does the train go? It can't go far, but there's clearly a reversing siding just around the corner. I just can't get over watching everyone get off a metro train on skis. It just seems so just not what we're used to. Look at this, it's just like um, amazing. It's, I've been to places a bit like this in the past, but not so close to a city centre. Like, usually you'd sort of go somewhere, you'd have to travel on a train an hour. The fact that we've got here so quickly, it's on possibly one of the most spectacular rides I've ever done on a metro train. There's those platforms there. Those platforms we saw, that must be what they're for, for drivers to get out. So perhaps at the other station, they sometimes turn trains back. I'm not sure how far I should go up here. Um, I think the snow's starting to melt, all the snow is coming off the trees. But that siding must go just behind those trees there. It's, you know, mad. So, just snow everywhere. And, um, yeah, the metro line continues. So there's not really a lot else to do. I can't see anywhere to get a coffee. There probably is, but I just haven't found it. Unless there's something around the corner. I feel like I'm just going off now for a walk in the countryside. And as much as I'd like to, I don't feel now's the time. I just want to have a look in here um, and have a look, see if I can see. Oh, I'm just like slipping into the snow and see if I can find the end of... Ooh, well, the snow's really deep here. It's in a drift. That's got to be the end of the line, just around the corner. I'm not going to go any further. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please, this, sorry, this is hard to get out of it. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. And from the end of the metro line in Oslo, goodbye.